Today we are going to be discussing milliequivalents, which is a way to describe the concentration of particles in a solution. It takes into account the solutes and their charges. So to calculate milliequivalents, you first have to understand how to, ter how to determine valence. This is the number of ions multiplied by the number of charges. One of the most common compounds you will see is sodium chloride. In solution, sodium chloride dissociates into one sodium and one chloride molecule. The sodium has a charge of positive one and the chloride has a charge of negative one. If you multiply the charge by the number of each ion, then you get one for sodium and one for chloride. You should get the same number for both. You do not need to add them together, unlike when you are calculating milliosmoles. The number you get here is the valence. So in the case of sodium chloride, the valence is one. And note that the sign of the charge doesn't matter if it's negative or positive here. You're just looking at the absolute value of the charge. Iron sulfate, seen by the chemical structure here, dissociates into two irons, each with a positive three charge, and three sulfates, each with a negative two charge. If you multiply the number of ions iron forms by the charge, you get a valence of six. Now, if you look at the sulfate, it dissociates into three sulfate molecules, each with a charge of negative two. If you multiply the number of molecules, which is three, by the charge of two, you get a valence of six. This means that the valence of iron sulfate is six. Now that we have an understanding of valence, we can calculate the milliequivalents in solution. If you are given a mass of a substance in the chemical formula, you can calculate its valence, as we just discussed, in the molecular weight using the periodic table. You can also calculate the mass in milligrams if given the amount in milliequivalents by rearranging the same equation. Let's try our first practice problem tying these concepts together. A physician orders 1,490 milligrams of potassium chloride to be given to a patient, but the hospital uses milliequivalents to dose this medication. Please convert the order to milliequivalents so you can finish entering this order. First, you want to calculate the molecular weight of potassium chloride by adding the atomic weight of each molecule, which we determined to be 74.5 grams per mole. Now let's determine the valence. Potassium chloride dissociates into one ion of potassium, which has a charge of positive one, and one ion of chloride, which has a charge of negative one. If we multiply each of these, we get a valence of one. Now that we have the molecular weight and valence, let's plug it into the equation and, and determine the milliequivalents. You just need to solve, and it looks like the amount of milliequivalents in 1,490 milligrams of potassium chloride is equal to 20 milliequivalents. Now let's try one more practice problem. A physician wants 10 milliequivalents of calcium chloride added to a TPN. How many milligrams of calcium chloride is this equal to? We're going to start by calculating the molecular weight using the periodic table, which comes out to 111 grams per mole. Now let's calculate the valence. Calcium chloride dissociates into one molecule of calcium with a positive two charge and two molecules of chloride, each with a negative one charge. When we calculate each of these, we get a valence of two. Since we are given the milli equivalents and we are solving for milligrams, we're going to use the second equation. If you plug the numbers and solve for the milligrams, you, you should get 555 milligrams of calcium chloride. 